What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and killing it today. It is an absolutely beautiful day. It's actually decently warm considering it is mid to late December. Today we are reviewing the 2023 GMC Sierra Elevation. Huge thank you to Chase Castle over at Coons Tyson Chevy Buick GMC for allowing me to do this review for you guys today. If you guys are interested in this particular Sierra or any GM product with the exception of Cadillac, I'll be sure to have Chase's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video first let's talk about the exterior and performance and like i said this is a 2023 gmc sierra 1500 elevation and this particular one has been painted in the very fitting 495 dollars onyx black the reason that i say it's very fitting is because this is the blacked out trim level of the sierra so with that said you do get a black headlight bezel with led headlights with intellibeam intellibeam is just a fancy way of saying automatic high beams you also do get LED daytime running lights as well as LED turn signals. And then you also get LED fog lights towards the bottom of the front bumper, which are located right here. Taking a step to the left, this is what makes the elevation the elevation. So you do get a body color grill header, which is up top here. So let's say you get a red elevation. This up top here will also be red. So this is body color. The rest of the front grill is gloss black get your GMC logo at the center of it and then you get an air duct on each side of the front end you got one right there one right there and I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see it or if the GoPro is gonna pick it up but you can see light right out that um, so the air comes out here and that's just for better aerodynamics which hopefully leads to better fuel economy but a couple other things that I wanted to point out while we are still at the front end is that you do get a body color front bumper as well as two frame mounted recovery hooks so you get one right here another one right there so if you ever get stuck don't forget that you do have those two recovery hooks you get 20 inch six spoke gloss black wheels that are wrapped in 275 60 general grabber HTS 60 tires these are the only wheels that you can option on the elevation so obviously they do come standard i think they look very good but they also do look very similar to the wheels that you find on the at4 another thing i wanted to show you guys in here is that you can see this carpeting or at least i hope you can see this carpeting in here that carpeting helps with road noise um, so it's just an added layer of insulation to help mitigate road noise right here you have a black fender applique that says gmc if you guys got the duramax it would say duramax right here and then just to the right of that, you have your satin black mirrors. One thing I do wish is that GM would have done a body color mirror cap. I think that would have looked a lot better. This is just a way to save a little bit of money. Still looks good, but I think it would have looked better with a body color mirror cap. Just my personal opinion, as well as these mirrors are heated and power adjustable. And then you have your fish eye mirror right here, which is like your old fashioned blind spot monitoring. So you get the old fashioned blind spot monitoring on the upper left hand side of your driver's side mirror and on the upper right hand side of your passenger side mirror. You get a shark fin antenna, black window trim, body color door handles and elevation badges on your front two doors. I'll give you guys a side profile of the elevation. Like I said, I think it looks absolutely phenomenal. This is the blacked out trim level of the Sierra. If you guys did not know that capless filler neck behind here, I'll show you guys the suspension. You get your leafs with your shocks. Again, get those 20 inch wheels and then you get your rear window defogger third brake light you get your two cargo lights up top there and then you get your bedside four by four badges that are in chrome kind of wish these were blacked out but still looks very good nonetheless and then working our way to the business end of the sierra elevation you do get led taillights but one thing um, is that the multi-pro tailgate normally comes standard with the elevation However, on this particular model here, you get a $445 credit for no multi-pro tailgate. So keep in mind that the multi-pro tailgate does come standard with the elevation. This one just has a $445 credit because it does not have the multi-pro tailgate. But right here, you have your backup camera. This is the button to open up your tailgate. You have a puddle light, GMC emblem at the center of the tailgate, Sierra emblem at the center of the tailgate, elevation badging on the lower right-hand side of your tailgate you get body color rear bumpers with corner step you get four and seven pin trailer lighting options boom four pin boom seven pin 
Um, if you guys want to drop your 17 inch spare tire, you gotta take your key out of your key fob, stick it in there and that will unlock your spare tire, which is located down here. While we are down here, let's talk about the rear differential. So on this particular model, you do get 342 rear gears and an Eaton auto locking rear differential, which is located right there. And then let's take a step back and open up the tailgate. So like I said, all you gotta do is press on this button right here. The tailgate will drop. Funny enough, the tailgate gets bed liner. However, the rest of the bed does not get bed liner. You get 12 tie downs here in the bed. So you get three here, three down there, three over there, and then three here as well. One thing that's also interesting is that on the window sticker, it says you get a $25 credit because it has no 120 volt instrument panel or cargo bed outlets. However, this one does have a cargo bed outlet and it's located right there. So I'm not sure what the deal is with that on the window sticker. Maybe this is not functional, um, but you can see you have your 120 volt outlet right there. So uh, just something interesting that I thought I'd point out. Maybe it doesn't work, maybe it does. I don't know, the window sticker seems to say that this particular elevation does not have this but it does, so just kind of interesting. Here is your LED cargo lighting. You get another LED cargo lighting, and then you got your two cargo lights located up top there. But if you guys were wondering about the max payload capacity, the max payload capacity of this particular elevation we have here is 1,824 pounds. The tailgate is actually very light, which is nice because it makes it very easy to close. And then if you guys were wondering about the max tow capacity of this particular elevation, the max tow capacity is 8,900 pounds as shown. Uh, let me know what you guys think of the elevation in the comment section down below. I know some of you guys are not gonna like it because some of you guys don't like a blacked out truck. Personally, me being 22, I really like the way that this thing looks with the blacked out grill, the blacked out wheels, blacked out window trim. Uh, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. I know some of you guys still like chrome, which fair enough, I understand why. But again, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. But with that out of the way, let's move into performance. Popping open that hood reveals the standard engine for the Elevation, which is a 2.7 liter high output turbo four cylinder that makes 310 horsepower and 430 pound-feet of torque. It is mated to an eight speed automatic transmission for a zero to 60 time in six and a half seconds. If you guys were wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 18 miles per gallon in the city, 20 miles per gallon on the highway for 19 miles per gallon combined. This motor is actually very peppy. Do not sleep on this. And the turbo noises are actually very very cool which I'll show you guys on the driving portion of the review but if you guys are enjoying the video so far today please give this video a big thumbs up please hit that subscribe button I'm really trying to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of 2022 and I cannot do that without your guys's help so if you guys would please give this video a thumbs up hit that subscribe button but let's move into the interior all right guys this is a 2023 model year vehicle after all so you do get keyless access all you got to do is have your key fob in your pocket walk up to the vehicle press on this chrome button right here and the vehicle will unlock you can also lock the vehicle by pressing that same button but there are a couple things i wanted to show you guys on the key fob before we moved into the interior and that has to do with if you press this button twice that will drop your rear tailgate and then you also have a button right under your lock button so if i press the lock button once and press the button right under the lock button twice that will remote start your vehicle. So you can hear the 2.7 liter fired up. So let's move into the interior. I'm gonna press the unlock button and let's take a look at our driver side door panel. So taking a look at our door panel, you get some faux wood trim as well as some aluminum trim just below that. Aluminum door handle unlock and lock buttons right in front of your aluminum door handle. You get a nicely padded armrest that is leather wrapped with some accent colored stitching. Automatic up and down driver window. However, all the other windows are automatic down only. Here are your power mirror controls. Pressing on this button will lock your passenger side window privileges. And then you have tons of storage space at the bottom of the door panel. I like this trim piece that surrounds your speaker. I think it looks fantastic. No, this does not have the Bose sound system. However, I think the speaker surround still looks very, very good. You get an aluminum door sill. You get a 10-way power driver seat, which is actually very comfortable. I think this might be more comfortable than the leather seats that you find in other Sierra models. Your front seat are heated as well as you do get a leather wrapped steering wheel that is also heated but let's step into the interior and uh, we'll start over here and then we'll work our way to the passenger side and then into our rear seats so 
over here pressing on this button turns on your electronic parking brake this puts you in four-wheel drive automatic this is too high this is four high so you do not get four low but i'm going to turn the vehicle on so all you got to do is have your key fob in the interior push your foot down on the brake and push to start and now the vehicle's accessories turn on i'm going to turn the climate off but right over here, this is your drive mode selector. So if I twist this one to the right, that puts me into sport mode, one more to the right, off-road mode, one more to the right, that puts you into terrain mode, and then switching it all the way back to the right puts you back into normal mode. And then if you press this button right here, that will put you into tow haul mode. Right over here, you got your jellyfish launcher, AKA your LED box lighting. Then you have these two buttons right here. This is to dim your backlit gauges as well as this is to brighten your backlit gauges as well as your backlit buttons. What am I saying? These are not backlit gauges. This is your 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster, which we'll get into here in a minute. But just beneath that, you have your headlight control knob. So if I twist this to the left, that turns automatic light control off. Twist that to the left one more time, that turns automatic light control on. Twist this once to the right, that turns my daytime running lights on. And then twist this all the way to the right and that keeps my headlights always on. I'm not sure if you guys can see. And then pressing on this button will turn your LED fog lights on. You can tell your LED fog lights are on because it lets you know right there. Pressing on that again, that turns that off. I like to leave my headlights in automatic personally. Yet a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel located underneath the steering wheel pull down on that and then you can tilt and telescope it. You can see up, down, forward, and backwards. Boom. And then let's talk about our turn signal stock. So this is not only your turn signal stock, but this is also your windshield wiper control stock. So if I press in on that, that turns IntelliBeam on or off. You can see the A looks like a high beam. So that's IntelliBeam on or off. Again, IntelliBeam is your automatic high beams. These are your window or, uh, windshield wiper controls. So you can see those are on. I'm gonna turn those off. Pressing on this will wash your front windshield. So you can see it's washing. And then let's take a listen to our turn signal so i'm going to close that that is what your turn signal sounds like and then i like that this has the good old-fashioned gear shifter so obviously pull down all the way puts you into drive pull down one more that puts you into low and then you can upshift and downshift on the column mounted shifter as well but like i said you do get a leather wrapped steering wheel that is also heated here is your heated steering wheel control you can tell the heated steering wheel is on because you have that amber light right there that is lit up press that again and the heated steering wheel turns off Right over here, you have your cruise control settings, and then this is your gap adjust button. So you can see, uh, I think this is for your forward collision alert. And then right over here, this is to speak to the vehicle and or pick up on a phone call. This is to hang up on a phone call. And then you have this scroll knob here, as well as these two buttons. This is to control your 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster, which we'll go through right now. So again, to control the screen, I do have to go into here and stay in demo mode and i believe now it'll let me go through out here yep there we go so this is your info page so right now you can see that's like fuel economy stuff that's more fuel economy stuff more fuel economy stuff that's your timer that's your tire pressures driver assistance stuff let me see if i let off the brakes okay no it doesn't do that um this is your driver assistance stuff down one more that's your oil life this is your brake pad life this is your air filter life that's a blank page and then you can go in between your different info page options go down one more and uh, this is probably the screen that i would leave it on your digital speedometer readout um, just my personal favorite click this once over to the right that brings you into your media stuff so your am fm xm and bluetooth one more that's your compass one more that's your phone stuff and then you can go into your settings um, you can see it says left side info so you can adjust where see where this w is you can put whatever you want to in that here i'll show you guys that actually so we'll go into left side info click on that and then you can see you can put either your trans fuel temperature fuel economy tire pressure compass right now it's set to compass but you you kind of you get the idea of what you can do and you can do the same thing on this side as well you also have your different display layout so right now this is classic we'll go into progressive this is progressive we'll go into digital this is digital 
and then we'll go into clean which basically only displays your speedometer which I kind of like uh, but it was in classic so we're gonna leave it in classic and wall classic is on screen this is your rpm gauge this is your speedometer again that's your digital speedometer readout I'm gonna go back over to here and I'll put my digital speedometer readout down here because that's probably where I would rather have it this is your speed limit sign, which will let you know the speed limit of where you are driving. That lets you know your lane keep is on. Again, digital speedometer readout. That's your compass. That lets you know what drive mode you're in. That lets you know that you're in park, reverse, neutral, drive, or low. This is your fuel stuff. So right now we're close to a empty tank. You see how you have your gas pump and it's pointing to the left. That means you fill the vehicle up on the driver's side. So if you guys didn't know, you have that little arrow right next to your gas pump that lets you know you fill up on the driver's side of the vehicle. If that was pointing to the right, that lets you know you fill up on the passenger side of the vehicle. Right at the center below your speedometer readout is where you'll find your fuel range. And then you have your coolant temperature down here. And then where it says 44 miles, that is the odometer. Let's take a listen to our horn. That is what the horn sounds like on this Sierra Elevation. You get your GMC lettering at the center of your steering wheel, and then you get some silver trim. Again, you get your column mounted gear shifter. And then just to the right of your column mounted gear shifter is where you'll find your 13.4 inch infotainment screen with wireless Apple CarPlay, as well as wireless Android auto connectivity. This comes standard with the Elevation, and I think it looks absolutely phenomenal in collaboration with your 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster. These things go uh, together very, very well and very, very nice to use. And when you have this in drive and you have Apple CarPlay displaying, all you gotta do is have your uh, arm or your hand setting on here and then it makes it easier to go in between your Apple CarPlay stuff. So very, very nice. Uh, but anyway, this is your Google-based infotainment. So you get your audio stuff, map stuff, phone stuff, camera stuff, Google Assistant, Play Store, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, trailer lights, climate, settings this is a wi-fi capable vehicle my gmc you can set service appointments you can go into your podcasts google news right over here is your home button however you have two home buttons so let's go back into like climate so you can see next to your volume knob you have another home button so if i press on that that will bring me back to this screen and then press that again that will bring me into my home screen one thing that's cool like if you do have a wireless charging pad and a gm vehicle and you have it on your wireless charging pad it'll let you know that your phone is charging right here i think that's pretty cool and then up top here you have your current time as well as the ambient exterior temperature that I think lets us know that our location services are off at the moment and then that lets us know how much signal our hotspot has at the moment and then down here again you get your volume knob you get your home button you get a blank button this is your lane keep button on or off auto stop start on or off this will drop your tailgate and then this is your hazard button click on that hazards are on click on that button again they turn back off this is your traction control on or off button and then pressing on this button will roll down all of your windows at once which is kind of cool uh, but it does not roll them all back up at once so just keep that in mind when you are doing that um, you do have to roll all the windows up manually with the buttons over here but anyway that's about that for these buttons you get some faux wood and then you get some aluminum trim push button start like i mentioned Pressing on this button will heat up your back as well as your butt. Pressing on this button will only heat up your back. Um, so you do have three levels of adjustability for both of those things. And then this is your climate control stack. One thing I like about the climate control stack is that it will display the temperature right here as well as over here, which on the new Ford products, they used to have the temperature display on their knobs. Uh, however, now, I guess for cost cuts, they do not do that anymore. So GM, good job for doing that and i'll show you guys that here right now so you can see it displays the temperature this is a dual zone climate control vehicle so the passenger can have their temperature and the driver can have their temperature if you press this sync button they both go to the same temperature and it defaults to the driver so you can see front defroster this is your rear defroster like i said you do get a rear window defroster and then all the way over on the right hand side of this you have a usb a port as well as a usb c port then pressing on this button right here will pop open your upper glove box. Then you also do have a lower glove box as well. I'm gonna try to move my backpack out of the way. It is a lockable glove box and let's open that up. Good amount of storage space down in there. Um, definitely can fit your owner's manual and some other things. Uh, and then you have four HVAC vents up on your dash. You got one right here, one right there, 
another one here and another one there uh, passenger side door panel looks pretty much the exact same as your driver side door panel and then one thing i wanted to show you guys um, this does not have the front bucket seats you cannot get the front bucket seats if you guys get the 2.7 liter you either have to get the 5.3 liter with precision shift and front buckets or the three liter duramax with precision shift and front buckets which basically gives you the center dash or the center console throughout here um, so it's a five seater this is a six seater and then what precision shift is it's the shifter mounted right here and then you get paddle shifters uh, behind the steering wheel but just keep in mind that that is an additional cost i'm going to move my laptop here and uh as well as this and we'll talk about it. you get two cup holders some miscellaneous storage base here some more miscellaneous storage base great spot you can set a phone um, this is nicely padded and leather wrapped i still think it looks good normally i don't think um when you get this configuration i don't think it looks good however this this one looks good and is still usable you still got a good amount of storage space down in there you can set whatever you want to here you can put your business cards um, in here as well which is pretty sweet and then again six seater so you can see this is a front center seat again you will have to upgrade engines in order to get the center console that flows through as well as the precision shift but again that's an additional cost this is standard so Anyway, you get an auto dimming rear view mirror, and then you got your OnStar stuff up top here. This lets you know if your passenger airbag is on or off. This is your driver light. This is your passenger light. Boom, boom, pressing on this button. Now when I open up the door, the interior lights will not turn on. Press that button again. Now the interior lights will turn on when I open up the doors. And to let you know if it is off, when you open up the doors, you can see an amber light right there. And then to turn it on, all your interior dome lights, press on this button, and then all your interior dome lights will turn on. Press that again, and then they will all turn back off. This is your visor. You get a vanity mirror with no vanity lights. Let's check the passenger. I would assume it's the same. You get a vanity mirror with no vanity lights, but you got a great spot right here on both visors that you can set your parking ticket so let's say you go into a parking garage they give you that parking ticket you can set it up here and then when you're leaving that parking garage you can give that ticket to the guy at the kiosk without having to worry about losing it so i like that you can also set some money up here your registration whatever you want to and then i do want to show you guys that this does in fact slide so boom slides and now it is blocking the sun so i'm, I'm actually going to leave that extended because the sun is in my face at the moment this is your bluetooth mic pickup for your bluetooth phone on your driver's side then you got one over there on your passenger side as well you get an o poop handle located right there the driver also gets an o poop handle uh, but what's different for the rear passengers is that they're located here and right here so just something that i thought i would point out there is something before we move into those rear seats that i did want to point out um, and that is that this only has one option on it and that one option is the 1500 dollars three year onstar and connected services which includes an unlimited data plan guardian app remote access and app access a couple things that i want to read off to you guys now is i have a new segment and it's called kenny's key features and some of those key features on this particular elevation include leather wrapped and heated steering wheel heated front seats dual zone climate control 10-way power driver seat remote start and keyless access now i want to read some safety and security features off to you guys so bear with me here for a second as i get it pulled up and some safety and security features include automatic emergency braking forward collision alert front pedestrian braking lane key assist with lane departure warning following distance indicator intellibeam which is your automatic high beams hd rear vision camera teen driver mode and tire pressure monitoring with fill alert while we're talking about safety let's talk about the safety rating so the overall vehicle score for this particular sierra elevation is five stars you can see i'll throw the rest of that on screen right now you can see frontal crash for the driver is five stars frontal crash for the passenger four stars side crash five stars for both the front and rear seats and then you get four stars for your roll over safety ratings i do want to throw the rest of the window sticker on screen right now which i will do right now 
uh, and you guys can see, you guys can read over whatever you want to read over as the way that this particular one is spec'd. But one more thing I wanted to talk about is that you do get a $1,500 credit for the 2.7 liter turbo, uh, which is kind of interesting because this motor is actually pretty dang good and it's a great alternative to Ford's EcoBoost motors. The turbo sounds pretty sweet in this thing. I'll show you guys that on the driver driving portion of the video. But let's talk about the MSRP. So the MSRP of the way that this particular 2023 Sierra Elevation is spec'd is $56,970. Let me know what you guys think of that price in the comment section down below. But I do wanna show you guys what's going on in those rear seats before we move on to the driving portion of the review. So let's take a look at what's going on back here. So let's take a look at our door panel. Looks very similar to what you find at the front. However, you do only get automatic down windows. You do not get automatic up windows, aluminum door handle, some wood trim, some aluminum trim, a nicely padded armrest that is leather wrapped with some accent colored stitching, same kind of speaker surround, and then you get tons of storage space at the bottom of the door panel. You get a seat back pocket behind the driver's seat, another seat back pocket behind the passenger seat. One thing that's cool about GM products or GM trucks in particular is that they have some seat storage down in here. Um, so all you gotta do is pull on this and that will open up. Same goes for obviously on that side, you can see you have that strap right there. You get a center fold down armrest with two cup holders and some miscellaneous storage space at the center of that. This is also nicely padded. Let's close that up and step into the vehicle. And you can see you have your all weather floor mats, another all weather floor mat. You get two HVAC vents back here, as well as USB A port, a USB C port, and a household power outlet, which is very, very nice. Normally on this kind of configuration, you do not get uh, USB ports or any sort of power outlet. But again, Opu panel, you get another Opu panel, you get a great spot you can set your cleaners, another spot you can set your cleaners, and then you have your two dome lights that you can turn on individually. Boom and boom, now they are both off. But yeah, this is a view of what I can see from here in these rear seats. You can see I've got plenty of leg room, I've got plenty of knee room, and I've got plenty of headroom. I am adjusted behind myself. I'm five foot nine. I'll show you guys a better view. You can see how much leg room I have between me and the seat. And you can see how much headroom I have. Um, again, five foot nine. And I've got plenty of space back here. I could sit behind somebody who's six three and still not have to worry about leg room. But you know, we've talked about the exterior, we've talked about the performance, and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior. I wanna see what this thing's like to drive as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So I will see you guys in the driver's seat. One thing I wanted to mention before we move into the driving portion of the review is that you have a great spot that you can set your phone up top here. And then right up top here is where you will uh, get red flashing lights if you're coming up on a vehicle too fast. So that is like your pre-collision assist. So those are just a couple things I wanted to point out before we move into the drive. Now let's move into the drive. All right, guys, and now on to the driving portion of the review. I'll give you guys a little bit of the sound clip. This thing sounds pretty cool. So this is the 2.7 liter high output four cylinder. Uh, and in my opinion, when you're just cruising at like idle speed, you know, like right now, listen. You hear the turbo spool up. I'm not sure if the GoPro is gonna pick it up. Here, I'll try it one more time. Ah, oh, it sounds so cool, man. Um, so actually, this thing's a lot of fun to drive. So this is the standard engine when you get the Sierra Elevation, and you only have three engine options. So you can either get the standard 2.7 liter, you can option for the 5.3 liter, or you can option for the 3 liter Duramax, and then you can also option for the 5.3 with precision shift and front buckets, as well as the 3 liter Duramax with precision shift and front buckets. But I think if you guys are looking to spend a little bit of money, you want something that still gets good gas mileage and is still Still plenty peppy so this thing makes 310 horsepower i believe and 430 pound feet of torque so this thing's actually pretty dang quick especially considering that this is um, you know the most docile engine or the uh, standard engine you know what i mean this thing pulls fantastic i think it sounds pretty dang good considering that it's a four cylinder but uh, one thing that i really like is the turbo sound so um listen right now it kind of sounds like a 6.0 power stroke listen but that's not the turbo. I'm not sure uh, what that, that guy was. A, that was an aggressive turn. I'm not sure what that sound is, um, but that's not the turbo that makes that noise. So we'll do a little acceleration here. I 
I mean, it accelerates to speed very, very easily. And normally I'm not a fan of four cylinders, something that's got like a V6 or something like that. But this motor is actually very, very good. And I've been wanting to test one of these things for quite a while now. And I'm finally happy that I can get my hands on one. And I am actually more than happy with it. So I would be totally fine driving this and not opting for the 5.3 or not opting for the 3 liter Duramax because honestly, this thing feels just as strong as the 3 liter or uh, excuse me, as the 5.3 liter V8 does. And yeah, it's not, it doesn't quite have the sound obviously of the 5.3, um, but still, I mean, it's got the power of the 5.3 in my opinion, you know, I don't feel like <laughs> that this thing really needs any more power. I feel like it's got plenty of get up and go. I mean, you can still tow 8,900 pounds, which is a lot of weight for a four cylinder. And this is a great direct competitor to the 2.7 liter EcoBoost, which you find in the Fords. Yes, that is a V6, um, but they make very similar power. You know what I mean? Like this thing doesn't feel like it's any slower than the EcoBoost. Now, when it comes to longevity of both the EcoBoost and this, I don't know which one's gonna out last which I believe that this is you know a relatively new engine anyway it's still plenty good you know what I mean I think it's a fantastic engine it gets up like I'm literally not putting any power or putting my foot really that far into the accelerator and that low end torque just really you know moves you out of your own way from a stop or you know cruising at 45 miles an hour it's a great little engine and yeah um it's the standard engine so we'll do a little pull here i'm not sure if we'll get a zero to 60 in but keep in mind if we do do a zero to 60 that we are on a downhill slope so this isn't totally a legit zero to 60 but we'll come down to zero miles an hour and i'll just punch it get a little bit of wheel spin 60 man it it moves like it it does not feel slow by any means and it actually sounds pretty good you know what i mean for a four cylinder this kind of reminds me and obviously it doesn't sound exactly like it but this kind of reminds me of my buddy's wrx sti i know you're gonna be like what the heck are you talking about but with the the spool up of the turbo it sounds very similar to that. So this is actually a fun little motor. Um, and even on that little acceleration, when it spun, it locked the rear differential. So it kind of, you know, you can have a little bit of fun with this. So it's actually a pretty fun powertrain. Um, yes, it's got the eight speed automatic, which I think is actually a very good transmission. Yes, they do consider the 10 speed a better transmission. However, I think the eight speed is still very, very good. In my personal opinion, I haven't, uh, you know, found that the 10 speed is really that much better than this. And I think this thing honestly shifts a little bit smoother than the 10 speed. That's just my personal opinion. It has less gears to go through and stuff like that. Uh, but I still think that this thing shifts plenty, plenty good. Now the brakes are very good as well. And just like any other GM vehicle, they handle absolutely phenomenal around turns. They stay so planted, so flat around turns. Um, and that's just, GM suspension they've got their suspension game down packed for sure um, and I'm gonna let that car go first but once that car goes we'll do another little acceleration nothing crazy but not something a little bit more than I would normally do now we got another truck bear with me here for a second all right now with that truck gone we'll do a little acceleration here nothing crazy again I mean it pulls it really it pulls very very well um, I think just as well um, than the 5.3, just as well, in my personal opinion. I think the elevation looks absolutely phenomenal. It's blacked out, it's got really nice headlights. The daytime running lights look sweet when you're cruising down the road. Like if I was that guy and I saw this thing coming in oncoming traffic, I'd be like, man, that is a very good looking truck, especially this one's all blacked out with the black paint and everything. But I think if you got this thing in white, if you got this thing in red, it doesn't really matter what color you get it in. I still think that it would look absolutely fantastic. I think this is one of the best looking uh, Sierra trim levels in my personal opinion. Again, I keep saying in my personal opinion, but um, all these things are subjective. You know what I mean? Like not everybody's gonna love the look of the elevation because it's blacked out. Some people would rather have the Denali because the Denali is chrome. It's got the chrome grill and all that kind of stuff. Really not giving it any gas and you can see how well that it accelerates. Uh, this motor is fantastic. Again, it's the standard powertrain for the elevation, uh, but I am plenty happy with it. I, I'm actually 
having a little bit of fun with it, listening to the turbo spool up and everything. Uh, it's a great little engine for those of you guys who, you know, you don't really care about the V8 sound or you don't really want to have a diesel because diesel is, you know, obviously more expensive to fill up than a regular gas powered vehicle. But this is a great alternative to the 5.3 liter. And again, you have to pay extra for the 5.3 on this trim level. The 2.7 comes standard. So we'll do a little acceleration, listen to the turbo. Let off. You hear the turbo spool up. It's like, it sounds so cool. And that is one thing that I like about turbo engines is that they have a little bit of personality to them. You know what I mean? They got that turbo spool up and they got a little bit of pep to them. So they are fun to drive. And uh, this thing is no different. It's got plenty of get up and go. It's got plenty of torque uh, for you guys who cruise on the highway, you know, 60, 70 miles an hour. You still have got, you know, plenty of power to pass people at 60 miles an hour. So don't worry about the 2.7 liter not having enough power because let me tell you from personal experience, it has more than enough power than one needs to drive on the highway, to drive in the city. It doesn't matter. It is a great powertrain but that's it for today's video if you guys enjoyed the video please give this video a big thumbs up please hit that subscribe button like i said i'm really gunning for 10,000 subscribers and i cannot do that without your guys' help so if you guys would help me hit 10,000 subscribers i would greatly appreciate it again give the video a thumbs up hit that subscribe button but i will see you guys in the next one peace